Hi there everyone and welcome to this video. Uh, what we're going to be talking through today is the new functionality um, that's just been released in the Wave 2 2023 update around um, allocation accounts. Um, so what is an allocation account? Well, it's uh, basically um, a tool within Business Central um, that we can use to distribute allocations uh, nice and efficiently across uh, multiple different application areas. Uh, so I'll just talk through um, how we can set up allocation accounts, the different types of configuration that we can do there. Um, we'll then go into some transactions and I'll show you how you can use those allocation accounts potentially um, on some different transactions. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is just come up to the search function here and just type in allocation accounts. Um, so this is the new page where we can set up uh, our allocation accounts. Um, so we can set them up prior to using them on uh, different transactions in the system. And I have set up a few different allocation accounts here, which I'll just talk you through to demonstrate how the functionality can be used. Bear in mind, um, you can use this in a number of different ways, but here um, I've just tried to, to illustrate uh, some different potential uses for the um, new function. Uh, so let me go into the first allocation account here for a contractor. And what I've done here is um, I've just uh, assigned a, a number and a name of, uh, of contractor. Um, and in the account type field, we either have the option to choose um, account type fixed uh, or account type variable. Um, so this one here is account type fixed, but we do have a variable example um, that we can talk through uh, a little bit later. Um, so essentially um, in the lines area, um, what we do is we choose the destination account type. Um, so is this a GL account? Is this a bank account? Or do we want to inherit from parents? So I'll show you sort of the, the functional use for that um, when we when we start putting this uh, allocation account through onto um, some transactions. But for now, let me leave this as um, GL account. And uh, because the destination account type is GL account, we can see that the destination account number is therefore looking up my chart of accounts. So if I drill down, um, into this field here. Um, this will basically give me my GL account list, but equally, if I choose bank accounts, um, it will give me my list of bank accounts and inherit from parent um, actually means that the destination account number is uh, is blank. So uh, I'll show you all this uh, in a second. So I also have the destination account name here, um, and this basically is just coming from my general ledger code. Um, the share here is, is basically um, a, a number field which we can use to input. And because I've input one in all three of my lines here, we can see that the percent field is 33, 33, and 33 for all of my lines here. Um, but what I can do if I want to is change this to 25, 25, and 50. And you can see there it's updating the percent in the background, right? So this is all about how do we want the allocation to be split out when we're using this uh, particular allocation account. And let me just change that back to one, one and one. And as you can see, it changes the percent there for us as well. Now, one of the other things you can do, which is quite cool on these allocation accounts, is you can assign dimensions. So if I come up to the first line here for um, destination account number GL uh, account 20300, I go to dimensions. I can see that I've got my administration dimension assigned there. Equally, if I come down to my next uh, destination account number, I can see I've got sales. And on my final line here, I've got production. So I've just used uh, the department dimension that you get in uh, the demo environment in Business Central. But of course, you can use any dimensions which you've got set up on your environment. OK, so let's go ahead um, and just review the uh, preview distributions before we go ahead and use this allocation account on a transaction. Um, so let me go preview distributions here and see what it does is it gives me a new page where I've got my destination account number 
as they were set up on the allocation account page prior to this one. Um, and here I've got an amount and a percentage, right? So because we've got an amount to allocate of a thousand, it's telling me that because I've got 33% selected on all the lines here, it shows me how it's going to break down those allocations when uh, we use this allocation account on uh, a transaction. Okay, and that's all we do to set up a fixed uh, account, uh, fixed allocation account in BC. So what I'm going to do now is let me just use the contractor one on a transaction. Um, so very quickly though, what I'm going to do is just show you that we do have a few places where we can use this. So I've just come into general journals and here, if I drop down on my account type, you'll notice that I've got an allocation account option here. So I can use that on my journals um, and that is on either side of my journal. So I can come to um, the right hand side here. And I also have a separate allocation account number field as well. So that's used um, in particular cases. Um, equally, I can go to my sales invoices or sales orders, um, sales credit memos as well. And if I just go to one that I've got set up here previously, I can drop down on the type and you can see here that I've got allocation accounts on my sales invoice page. And because it's also on the, on the sales invoice page, um, as you'd expect, it's also been added to a purchase invoice. So if I just go ahead now and set up a um, purchase invoice here, What I can do is use my allocation account here on my particular line, right? So I'm going to come in and say contractor. I'm going to say one and I'm going to say 100. Now, do bear in mind, this may not be the way that you use this um, in, uh, in your particular business central environment, but this is one of the ways that it can be used. Um, so just whilst we're on this particular line, there's a new function in this line area here so I can go redistribute account allocations. And what this is doing is it's showing me my accounts from my allocation accounts page as we set them up, as we run through earlier. And you can see I've got my amounts here, but I can change these amounts, bear in mind, you know, so it's, uh, it's editable here. And I've got an original amount to allocate here, which is 100, because that's what I put on my invoice line. I've got my posting date, and I've got my remaining amount to allocate, which is uh, zero right now. But you'll notice if I go ahead and change my final line here, my third line to one, what it does is it tells me that I've got a remaining amount to allocate of 32.34. And that's obviously because I need to allocate the full amount of, uh, of this line. Now I can change that to two and what we'll notice is that the remaining amount to allocate decreases. So it basically knows, you know, how much I've got to allocate. Um, so I'm going to close that and I'm going to say, no, I don't want to save the changes. I just wanted to show you that you can modify those allocation accounts um, during the posting on the fly. Now what I'll go ahead and do is post this um, invoice and let me say yes and we'll just wait for that to come through so it tells me the invoice is posted and asks me if I want to open the posted invoice I'm gonna say yes here and what you'll notice is on the posted purchase invoice um, we do have all of the GL account lines that were in the accounts uh, the allocation account um, so we've got 20300, 313 and 315, each with a quantity of one and the appropriate di uh, direct unit cost and the di uh, department dimension that we applied to those when we set that up as well. Um, so as you can see, I, I popped on my invoice a single allocation account and that broke up the values to um, um, a number of different lines in the posted purchase invoice. So. Again, this may not be how you use it in a real life scenario, but uh, just illustrating that you can use that there on a posted purchase invoice. Okay, so um, 
one of the other ways that we could potentially use um, the allocation um, accounts here, so if I go back to allocation accounts, is um, I can set up a variable account type. So if I come into my employees one here, you'll notice that the configuration is much the same. So I have a number and a name. I do have an account type of variable set on this one. And what this does is it changes the fields that I see in the lines area here. Now, what I've done in this particular allocation account is I've still used a destination account type of GL account. I've got three GL accounts, which are all the same here. I mean, they don't have to be, but I'm just showing you for example here. Um, and what I can do, because the account type is variable here, I can choose the breakdown account type. So I can use a GL account, I can use a bank account, or I can use a statistical account. Um, and just to illustrate this particular bit of functionality, I've used statistical accounts here. Now, we haven't done a video on those yet, but I will get around to it at some point. Um, and because I've chosen the breakdown account type of statistical account here, I can choose in the breakdown account number from my statistical accounts. Now, statistical accounts are basically it's a, it's a sub ledger that you have in the Business Central environment. And here I've used my statistical account for employees, of which I have um, 70. And I can drill down into there. I mean, you can post uh, statistical journals and stuff, guys, but yeah, it's one for um, another time. So I'll do another video on that. But you can see here. I've got a posting date, I've got a statistical account number, I've got an amount, and I can add to those um, transactions departments as well, right? So here I've got um, 14 people that were hired in the administration department. I've got here four people that were hired in the production department. You get the idea, guys, here. Um, and we reduced the headcount here for my administration department. And basically, we now have 70 employees. OK, so what I can go ahead and do is um, add um, that statistical account to my allocation account here. And I've put in a filter um, for each of these lines that I have on my allocation account. So the first line is filtered to those employees that belong to the administration department. The next one is production and the next one is sales. So I'm just using the same dimension here, but you can drill down here and you can add department, customer group, or business unit code filters if you're using that area of the system as well. Now, what are the implications of this? Well, if I jump back here to another purchase invoice, and do bear in mind, I'm showing you on a purchase invoice here, but you can show this um, on a, you can use this, sorry, on a, on a general journal, on a sales invoice as well. Um, so, I'm going to come down to allocation accounts here. I'm going to set this as employees. I'm going to say one and we'll just use a direct unit cost of 100. I'll put in my vendor invoice number. And again here, I can review the, the, the account allocations and redistribute them here if I need to. So what has it done this time? Well, it's basically split out my um, account cost here. Um, so I've got my destination account number as 20300 because that's what I selected on my allocation account. But you can see here the amounts have been broken down um, and they are based on the, the, the filters for uh, the department dimension that I entered on my statistical accounts ledger. So we had 70 employees and BC has broken this up to this amount, which belongs to, um, I think it was my administration department. And it's broken it down to, to this amount, which belongs to my production department, and this amount, which belongs to my sales department. Okay, so what happens is, is when I post this invoice, so I'll just go post and yes. It says, do you want to open the posted invoice? I'll say yes. And let me just go ahead and say find entries. And if I come into my GL entries here, you'll see that what it's done is posted to GL accounts 20300 on my general ledger with the department code with the relevant amounts, just as we saw in the um, allocation accounts redistribution page there. 
Um, so it's quite clever there. It, it allowed me to use my statistical accounts sub ledger to break up how that transaction is posted on my general ledger. So guests could make life uh, a lot easier. Do bear in mind, you may not use allocation accounts in the same way that I just did here, um, but it is one of the ways that you can use it. Now, one last thing that I want to show you here is if I go back to allocation accounts here, um, obviously there's a number of different ways that you can set these up, but this one um, I've just chosen inherit from parent, right? So the account type here is fixed and my destination account type says I need to inherit this from parent. And what I'm going to do here is just show you if I drill down into this particular field, it tells me that I cannot select the number if inherit from parent is selected. It tells me that the destination account number and type will be taken from the line when the allocation account number field is set. Now, what does this mean? Well, it basically means that I can use this inherit from parent setting when I want to choose one particular GL account number, but I want to break up the transactions um, in, in, in a particular way. And you can see here I've got my share set to one, so it's 33%, 33%, 33%. And what I've done is added to each of those lines a dimension. So administration on the first line, production on the second, and sales on the third. Again, guys, you can use your own dimensions here. I'm just showing you how this works. Now, again, I'll come back to a purchase invoice here. I'm just going to enter a vendor number and let me enter a vendor invoice number. I'm just going to pick my allocation account. I just want to show you here that if I pick inherit from parent, it does error. And the reason why, um, I won't read the whole error message there, but it basically tells me that the um, account number will be taken from the parent line, right? So because I have inherit from parent selected, it's showing me that error. So what I'm going to do this time is say GL account, and I'm going to drop down on here and say 10100. I'm going to say quantity one. I'll say direct unit cost 100. And what I'm going to do this time is in the allocation account number field, I'm going to select inherit from parent. OK, and now if I go to functions and redistribute account allocations, we can just review this here. You can see what it's done is it's broken down the one line on my purchase invoice to three different lines. And you've probably guessed it already here. It's got my department dimension. It's got my production department dimension there, and it's got my sales department dimension. I am seeing a few others, guys, I guess. Uh, that's probably configuration on the vendor. Um, but if I go ahead and post and say yes and say yes, and this time, guys, you'll see that that one line on my original unposted purchase invoice has now become three on my posted purchase invoice, and we've got the different departments and the amount selected there. Now, do bear in mind here, guys, that I've shown you only um, sort of this functionality only on the purchase invoices, but you can use this across other system areas. I guess it's up to us, you know, uh, to find a, an applicable use for this. Um, but I do think that it is an efficient way to post and break up transactions. Um, basically can make life a, a lot easier for us um, if we want to break up those transactions when uh, we're, we're posting them. Um, so anyway, I hope you found that useful. That was everything that I wanted to show you. Feel free to have a play um, in a sandbox environment, of course. Reach out if you have any questions. Um, but thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you on the next one.